Okay, so a couple of months ago, I recorded a whole heap of footage for a basic 3D tutorial using C Sharp. It's way too much footage. I regret doing that. I was going to cut it all down. I didn't do any voiceover during it, so I was going to record a voice in post. And that seems like a terrible idea. So instead, I'm going to do like a project walkthrough, which is kind of what I've done before, and it's worked pretty well. If you've got detailed questions, you can ask them in the comments down below. So the project that we have is this. I've gone with this funky cyberpunk kind of aesthetic. Here's a little cube. If you look at things that you can interact with, you get a little pick up. You can pick it up, move it around. It clips through walls because it's annoying if it doesn't, if you're banging up against it and you want to move. Uh, and you can throw it. And I can go pick it up and throw it again. If I leave that behind, there's this little corridor down here, and we have these little gated doors that I can open. Uh, we've got a ramp here. I can jump around, which is faster. Uh, this door you can't open, but you can activate this little pillar. You can only activate the pillar once, it changes colors, yada yada. And through here we have a little pressure plate. When you stand on the pressure plate, multiple things can act based on that. You come through here, you get a little game over the screen, you can click restart, it just reloads the level. Nothing too exciting. Uh, so, we'll do a bit of a walkthrough, and I guess a bit of an introduction to Godot in 3D. Uh, once you're in a scene, you can middle mouse click to pivot around the middle of the screen. Or you can hold down the right mouse button and you can look around like an FPS controller. And while you've got the right mouse held down, you can move around with W, A, S, and D. Q and E go down and up. Uh, you can hold down shift to go faster. So you can zip around the map, do whatever you're trying to do. Selecting stuff, obviously you just click on it. If you're clicking on things and nothing's working, have a look up here. You've got different modes to like let you drag stuff around or rotate it and you can toggle between these i've got a little w e and r uh, make sure that you're in the little mouse selector mode which if you hover over says q so if you can't click on stuff check that uh, other things that are useful to know is Obviously, when you click on things, it selects it in the outliner here. If you're looking at something in the outliner and your camera is way over here and you're completely lost, you can press F on your keyboard to find whatever it is that you've got selected. You can jump around the map and focus in on what you're actually looking for. And again, if you middle mouse and rotate, you, you'll pivot around the center of the screen. So if you've just focused on something, that's an easy way to figure out what you're looking at. Uh, obviously you can zoom in and out and that's probably it for moving around so you're able to move in a 3d scene that's pretty cool how would you go about populating it if we jump over into our new scene here there's a couple of cool nodes that are worth looking at if you search for csg there's a bunch of csg things uh csg box is a nice easy one this is a nice simple shape you can adjust it up here or you can grab these little extents to drag it around give it a new size. These CSGs also have a super handy little button here, use collisions. So it'll magically get a collision shape that is matched to the extents. Make sure you're resizing and stuff using these and not the transform because then your collision stuff will be out of sync and you'll give yourself headaches. Just use the little extents. Whenever there are extents, use them. One of the other cool things that you can do with CSG shapes that makes them worth playing with is they can do Boolean operations on each other. So you can have another CSG box that is much smaller. And if we drag it so it's intersecting here somewhere, something like this, and you go to subtraction, it removes that. So if we were to make it long enough, now we have a tunnel through our first thing. This works for all of the CSG shapes. It's just that they have to be a child. If these were side by side, it doesn't do anything. So if you nest things and then you adjust the operation of the child, it will apply to the parent. So you can make some pretty cool maps. You can block stuff out. You can chuck in a CSG box on the floor 
or a CSG plane, uh, just make sure that you've got your collisions turned on so that your person doesn't go falling through. So you can block out a pretty quick map just playing with these things. Probably a lot prettier than this. For performance, they have a thing called a CSG combiner. So if you grab a CSG combiner, you can just put a bunch of CSG children under it. And I believe it somehow magically improves performance. So rather than having like 50 different CSG boxes in the scene, you should put them all as a child of a CSG combiner. Which is kind of what I've done over here. So I've got a floor, which is a CSG box down here. I've got a bunch of walls and stuff. They're all under a combiner, which also groups them nicely. Uh, then there's a bunch of interaction stuff. One of the cool things here you can see is there's some signals going on. So we can do this pressure plate. So click on it. Don't know where it is. Lost. Hit F. It's focused in the middle of my screen. I can rotate around it with the middle mouse button. Our pressure plate here we can see has a script. Pressure plate .cs because it's C sharp. It has an on activated and an on deactivated. So those are when you walk onto it and when you walk off it. And there's some doors here that have been set up to listen for that. So when you walk onto this, these two doors have their activate called. And when you walk off it, deactivate is called on those doors. This door here isn't controlled by signals. It's controlled by this pedestal. The pedestal doesn't have any signals to emit. Everything in here is controlled through a single node path. So you can select what you want to affect. In this case, I want to affect this door, the one next to the pedestal. And when you activate our pedestal, only that one door will activate. So we're just showing that there are a couple of different ways you can handle connections between things. The other thing is that on these doors, they have an is interactable flag. None of these have it enabled. So the only way you can interact with them is by stepping on something that triggers them like the pressure plate or by pressing the pedestal. Over this side, we had a door that I pressed activate on or open when I came up to it. That's because it's got this little flag turned on. So we're going to cover how to set up a bunch of stuff like that so that you can create a bunch of cool interactable stuff. It's all shared code. There's a single door. How that's opened is entirely up to how you wire things up. And then I've created this material, this little visual shader. Uh, I don't know anything about visual shaders, but we'll walk through what I did to create this. Shaders are magic. If you understand shaders, you are a wizard. Uh, but we'll go through what I did. It was basically trial and error until I got something that looked like what I wanted. So this one material is just slapped onto everything. And then these have a shader parameter, which lets you handle the tiling. So you can set how it looks. We can add more or less grid things. We can make it super glowy or not very glowy at all. And we can change the color to be whatever we'd like. So it's pretty cool. So you can look forward to discovering all of that stuff. Plus we'll go through some code in C Sharp. So if you haven't used C Sharp before, that's pretty exciting as well.